Hi, I am Dr. Vidhuvarsha. Today we will discuss chromosomal microarray. So, it is a study of chromosomes at a higher resolution. It has replaced karyotyping uh, in many things like for investigation of a developmental delayed child, autism spectrum disorder and a child with a multiple malformations of unknown origin. So it has replaced karyotyping. So what is the principle behind chromosomal microarray? It is mainly based on complementary hybridization of nucleotides in the probe and target DNA. So it is based on complementary hybridization of nucleotides in the probe and target DNA. So what probe they use here? Probe. So probe these are oligonucleotides. That are, these are varying in length from 25 to 70 base pairs. These form the backbone for the chromosomal microarray and it defines the resolution. So this chromosomal microarray can detect copy number variations or single nucleotide polymorphisms or both okay. they have different types of arrays Example array C G H that is comparative genomic hybridization. Other one is single nucleotide polymorphism array. Okay. So for example in Comparative genomic hybridization array, they take DNA of the patient and this is control DNA. So DNA of the patient and control DNA, these both are mixed and hybridized and these are plotted in an array. So if they have the patient DNA this like this, if they, it's a color to the patient DNA, it represents gain of mutation. If it is of control, it represents loss of mutation or loss of gene. If it is no, neutral color, It represents normal study. So, these are computer analyzed and then reported. This is for an example F10. Okay. So, chromosomal microarray has a highest diagnostic yield. So, has a highest diagnostic yield. 
for evaluating patients with cognitive impairment developmental delay third autism spectrum disorder fourth in multiple malformations of unknown etiology okay next how do you interpret the result which you get in chromosomal microarray so interpretation so this interpretation classifies the copy number variants as so it is a classification of copy number variants as pathogenic another one is uncertain clinical significance this pathogenic has a criteria so to call the patient is having a disease of pathogenic origin you have some criteria so what are these they are a known micro deletion or duplication syndrome clinically significant in peer reviewed journals these are clinically significant in peer reviewed journals thirdly the copy number variants that are more than 3 to 5 mb size okay so to tell the patient is having a pathogenic copy number variants these three criteria have to be, i mean uh, any one of these three have to be met in patient with an uncertain clinical significance we have four types here first one likely pathogenic so likely pathogenic is reported in a single case so they they are being reported as a single case report phenotypic phenotype correlates with the patient's feature okay second no sub classification in no sub classification these are reviewed in multiple peer reviewed journals peer reviewed journals with no clinical significance okay third likely benign so what is this likely benign so these are seen in small number of patients that is copy number variants are seen in small number of people that is in norm mainly in normal individuals okay next fourth one is benign so see and that is copy number variants has been characterized to be benign in nature so this is benign nature is characterized common polymorphism and population frequency for this uh, copy number variant is more than 1 percentage so common polymorphism and population frequency of more than 1 percentage 
So this is the classification of copy number variants. That is pathogenic and uncertain clinical significance. In pathogenic, they, they have a known microdeletion or duplication syndrome, clinically significant in peer-reviewed journals, and copy number variants that are more than 3 to 5 MB size. Okay. In uncertain clinical significance, we have four, that is likely pathogenic, no subclassification, likely benign, and benign. Next. Uh, next we'll see the fourth point what you have to write early i mean the sixth point what you have to write in chromosomal microarray these are advantages so what are the advantages here it can be done from a dna isolated from any type of tissue so it can be done from DNA isolated from any type of tissue unlike in karyotyping which requires life actively dividing cells okay second advantage is it has a high resolution that is chromosomal microarray can detect copy number variants as small as 10 to 20 kilobytes it is mainly Objective result interpretation. It can also detect the cryptic imbalances. So, these are the advantages of chromosome and microarray. Next, we will see the limitations that is, the disadvantages of chromosome and microarray. First, it does not detect balanced, so it does not detect the balanced translocations. Second, it is inability, to, it, can also, it cannot detect, I mean inability to detect point mutations. deletions or duplications third if suppose you are using a targeted array okay, if you are using a targeted array missing variations in the regions that are not targeted by the probe cannot be detected. Okay. Fourth limitation is they have a difficult interpretation of variant of unknown significance so difficult interpretation of variant of unknown significance okay so this is about the chromosomal microarray so first you need to write the uh, for what we are using this chromosomal microarray it is a study of higher uh, chromosomes at a higher resolution it has replaced karyotyping the basic principle behind is complementary hybridization of nucleotides in the probe and also in the targeted DNA. So the probe used here is a oligonucleotides that vary in the length from 25 to 70 base pair and it forms the backbone and defines the resolution of chromosomal microarray. They can detect the copy number variants or single nucleotide polymorphism or both. There are different types of array that is array with a comparative genomic hybridization and single nucleotide polymorphism array. 
So in a array with the comparative genomic hybridization, they have DNA of the patient and control DNA which is mixed and hybridized and these are computer analyzed and reported. So they have a high diagnostic yield for patients. I mean you are evaluating the patient with cognitive impairment, developmental delay, autism spectrum disorder and multiple malformations of unknown etiology. So in the interpretation of the results of copy number variants can be pathogenic or uncertain clinical significance. In uncertain clinical significance, it can be a likely pathogenic or no classification, likely benign and benign. So the advantages of the chromosomal microarray over karyotyping are it can be done from a DNA isolated from any type of tissue unlike in karyotyping which requires a live and actively dividing cells. It has a higher resolution. It is an objective result in interpretation. It can also detect the cryptic imbalances. Limitations, it cannot detect the balanced translocations and inability to detect the point mutations, deletions and duplications. If you are using a targeted array, it cannot uh, detect the variation that has been targeted by the that, that are not targeted by the group sorry and it also has difficulty in interpretation of uh, variant of unknown significance okay so this is about the chromosomal microarray thank you please subscribe like share and comment my youtube channel thank you